There are some of the eminent Muslim scholars who have made analytical studies of economic issues that we are familiar with, such as Imam Ghazali, Ibn Qayyimah, and Ibn Khaldun. Do you know Muhammad Baqir al-Sa'id? He, he, he is one of the eminent Muslim scholars and thinkers of modern times. He attempted to project Islamic economics as a viable alternative to capitalism and socialism based on the logical and realistic solutions that Islam provides to the economic problems of men. He wrote a comprehensive book on economics, Iqti Saduna. In Iqti Saduna, he has made a detailed study on capitalism, socialism, and communism, and the book primarily deals with various aspects of Islam economy. He tried to provide explanation that Islam had its own economic foundations that could be considered as a third economic system apart from capitalism and Marxism. His book, Iqti Saduna, which was written in the late 1950s and first published in 1961, put his name as one of the pioneers of contemporary Islam economics. Many other data, scholars were influenced by his comparative approach in explaining the capitalism, socialism, and Islamic economic system. According on his writing in Iqti Saduna, we can say that Assad is original thinker and independent of the dominant recent intellectual paradigm. Assad independence of thought is seen as one of the reasons that attract many scholars to study and explore his works. And Assad's main writing on Islamic economics, Iqti Saduna, has been praised as an initial comprehensive study that provides an excellent Islamic response to the recent ideologies, capitalism and Marxism as economic doctrines, while at the same time laying the foundations for an Islamic economic doctrine. It suffices to say that, besides Assad's work, so far there is no such comprehensive work on comparative economic economic system, system in Islamic perspective. Assad has different view on the nature of Islamic economics. Assad firmly considered Islamic economics as a doctrine, system, school of thought, and not as an end, meaning that science. Islamic economics is a doctrine with set of principles derived from uh, the sources of his Islam, which are the Quran and Sunnah, to guide human economic activity. According to him, Islamic economics is a doctrine which is more concerned about discovering every basic rule of economic life connected with the ideology of social justice rather than a science of an interpretation of existing reality which gives the explanation of economic life, its economic event and its economic phenomena and the linking of those events and phenomena with the general causes and factors which rule therein. Islamic economics, according to him, is like capitalism and Marxism. They are doctrines that have the role to lay down policies for the organization of economic life based on certain conceptions that are unique to the system. Islamic economics is not a sign of economics for science has no role in laying down the policies. Science is interested in studying the effects of a policy which has already been implemented in society. In addition, the science of economics aims at discovering and explaining the phenomena of economic life and the interrelation he, relationship, whereas the objective of doctrine of economy is to formulate laws based on social justice to be implemented in organizing the economic life of mankind. In other words, Assad's interest to consider Islamic economics as a doctrine is due to his view that capitalism as well as Marxism is more a doctrine than science. Assad firmly believed that capitalist and Marxist economies are based on certain doctrines. In Ikhti Saduna, Assad explored those doctrines of capitalism and Marxism clearly and demonstrates the incom incompatibility of both Marxism and capitalism with Islam. He attempts to prove that Islam has a doctrine that is quite different from the doctrine of capitalism and Marxism and therefore it should be regarded as a third economic system along with them. Therefore, we have seen the comparison of doctrinal foundation of capitalism, Marxism and Islam in most part of Ikhti Saduna. And also, it's not the scholars defining Islam economics as a system or doctrine. Some scholars have shared similar definitions. Mama Abdullah al Arabi defines Islam economy as a set of principles derived from the Quran and Sunnah and constructs the economics based on those principles according to times and places. Hassan Zaman defines Islam economics as the study and application of Sharia rules that prevent injustice and allow people to fulfill their responsibility to both Allah and society while also providing them with a sense of well-being. Let's see what Baqin Aswad's thoughts on Marxism are. 
Marxism advocates and drive humanity to materialize is known as the Marxist creed. It has two stages, socialism and communism. From the point of view of the historical materialism, humanity will reach the highest stage of development on the basis of the law of dialectics. That highest stage is known as communism. However, before reaching that stage, it will pass through a stage known as socialism. During this stage, a government will be established which will nationalize the resources of wealth and the capitalistic means of production. In this way, a classless society will emerge in which the arrangement of distribution will be based upon the principle from everyone according to his capacity and for everyone according to his work. Marxism believes that the class composition is the result of private property. When the private property is abolished, the society will turn into a single class. Further, the, the economic and political nature of the socialist stage, according to Assad, can lead to the creation of a new form of class in cosynthesis. So, for as the economic distribution in the socialist state is concerned, it is based, to, based upon the principle for everyone according to his work, Assad argued that it contradicts with the classless nature of the socialist society. Because the individuals naturally differ from one another in their work efficiency due to the difference in their capabilities, nature of the work, and the degree of its complication. Thus, a talented worker gifted with genius and intelligence cannot be equalized with an ordinary worker. Therefore, according to him, Marxism finds only two solutions to solve the issue. One, to adhere to the principle of distribution which states for everyone according to his work, and therefore distribute, distribute the production among the individual with different degrees and create class in constant C a new or it may take away the surplus value from talented worker that capitalism in order to equalize the wages. Moving to communism. Communism, according to Marxism, is the highest stage of human development. This is the final stage of history in which the society will turn into a single class. All the class struggle will come to an end and the natural resources will be equally distributed. There are two pillars of communism according to Marxism. First, wiping out of private ownership not only in the field of capitalist production but in the field of consumption also. Thus, it nationalizes all the means of production and all the consumer goods. Second, is the elimination of political authority and finally liberation of the society from the clash of the government. As for the wiping out of private ownership in all the fields, Alsat states that it does not derive its existence in the doctrine from the scientific law of value as the nationalization of the means of capitalist production is based on the theory of surplus value. Instead, the idea is based on the assumption that the society will attain a high degree of richness as the production powers uh, will grow enormously. Consequently, no room is left for private ownership. Therefore, the, the distribution will be based upon the principle for, from everyone according to his capacity, for everyone according to his need. As for the second pillar of communism, this appearance of government is concerned, Assad questions that how this change will take place. Marxists have been saying that the revolution against government always part from the class which is not represented by that government. Assad argued that if the, if the change from socialism to communism is revolutionary, then which class is going to bring it? As in communism, the society is a single class. However, if the change is a gradual one, then it contradicts with the law of realities. Assad fur further argued that the change also contradicts the nature of reality because how can government give a death blow to itself while every other government on the face of earth adheres to its center and defend its political existence to the last moment of its life? Lastly, uh, Assad argues that if the miracle of communism is given the practical shape, will then the society does not need an authority to regulate the proper distribution of work and the problems related to it. Okay, moving on, let's see what Bakil Assad thoughts on capitalism are. Capitalism is an economic system in which the production and distribution of goods and services are privately owned. It is often called the free enterprise system. As in this system, individuals are free to invest their capital. Sometimes it is also referred as free market economy because in this system, buyers and sellers are free to exchange goods and services. The capitalist economy, according to Assad, is based upon three elements. These are freedom of ownership, freedom of exploitation, and freedom of consumption. 
this freedom is granted to every individual in the capitalist economy system equity without any limitation or restriction and to all of them equity. Thus, every individual has the full freedom to pursue any approach and to take up any, any path or for acquiring, enlarging, and multiplying his wealth in accordance with his personal interests and benefits. Apparently, there is a huge difference between the capitalist doctrine and the Marxist doctrine. The former acknowledge the private property and provide unlimited freedom to the individual while as uh, the latter abolish the private property and sacrifice the individual for the sake of the society. However, according to Assad, it is wrong to make a distinction between the two doctrines on the basis of their attention towards the individual and the society and regard the capitalist doctrine as an individual doctrine and the masses doctrine as a collective doctrine. He argues that both the doctrines are individualistic in nature because both of them rest on individual views and depend upon personal views and ego. The capitalism ensures fortunate individuals' ego by providing them, pro- providing him an unlimited freedom of ownership, exploitation, and consumption, and the Marxism focuses upon the unfortunate individuals. It prepares them against the exploitation of rich people and provides them a hope for a better future. And according to Sartre, Asai, the doctrine which deserves the title of the collective doctrine is one which should depend on powers other than the ego and personal impulses. Such a doctrine cultivates in every individual a deep consciousness of responsibility towards the society and its interests. Such a doctrine makes it incumbent upon an individual to forego some of the fruits of his work, efforts, and some private wealth for the sake of the society. Indeed, such a doctrine safeguards rights for of individuals and ensures their wel- welfare. All these characteristics feature, according to a site of present in Islamic economic doctrine. So to conclude, Muhammad Bakir Assad is among the earlier contributors of Islamic economies. His keen interest was in exploring and discovering the doctrine and principle of Islamic economies based on the primary sources of Islam. His initial works has influenced subsequent Islamic economies in the development of Islamic economies. Assad's work, Ikhti Saruna, is still recognized as a magnum opus in Islamic economies, literature and considered as a prerequisite reading in Islamic economy studies. His understanding on the nature, subject matter, and methodology of Islamic economy basically reflects his intellectual and activist background. A side conception of Islamic economies is often categorized as a radical approach in Islamic economies in contrast to the mainstream approach in Islamic economies. Assad's contribution in, is mainly in developing the doctrine of Islamic economy to be the foundation of Islamic economy system. His keen effort was in establishing these doctrines pure to any analytical study. His methodology therefore followed his concept of the nature of Islamic economics and was directed on how to discover and establish the doctrine of Islamic economics from the primary sources of Quran and Sunnah.